Good day, ladies and gentlemen. And it is the very end of August 2019. And what a month it's been. First things first, seeing as how this is the year of changes, I want to bring up a concept that is rather near and dear to my heart and something that took me many years to get over. The good old days fallacy, ladies and gentlemen. We often look to the good old days as a source of comfort in many respects. Because the good old days are known compared to the unknown days of the future. The reality is, the good, old day, the good old days, I should say, in many instances, aren't quite as good as we remember. And we should not let the good old days hold us down as we move on to the future. I myself have been moving on to the future this past year. Letting go of the old days is not an easy prospect. There are memories that we cherish a great deal, but we must keep in mind that they are indeed memories and only represent a time gone by. And we must keep ourselves open to new opportunities and new experiences that can be better than the good old days. All right, with that bit of seriousness out of the way, let's get on with the updates. As of this month, we are, of course, going to be taking a look at Star Wars Connect. In fact, the video is going to go up, I think, literally two days from that. this video uh, being uploaded. And, uh, yeah, working on the video is pretty easy because there's only so much you could say about that thing. Uh, so yeah, it was a lot of fun actually working on it. I actually mentioned this in the review. A lot of Star Wars Connect reviews are like how bad it is, but it makes for a great little party game. I mentioned that as well in the review. Because you look hilarious trying to play that thing. Next month's review is going to be Episode 1, Racer. Uh, I'm going to mention the story that I always mention. I'm not going to mention it here so you don't get overloaded by that one story, but that's the only way I've ever heard of that game. Uh, also, bringing back the book reviews... I've brought these back now and again over the past couple of years. As I've stated in other vlogs, the channel initially was set up to make book reviews. I thought that was the one thing that was going to separate my channel from everyone else. Sadly, no one watched the book reviews, but they watched the game reviews, which were made just to tide over people for the book reviews. Now, I'm not going to make really high-quality book reviews like I used to, because those took forever and no one watched them. Instead, they're just going to be your basic little podcast kind of book reviews that I've done in the past. I'm going to try to have a consistent schedule with them of one per week because they are fairly easy to make. It's just putting a cover and some audio. And it still allows you to know of what good books or fanfics to look at. Uh, I've already got four recorded for next month. I'm going to record some more uh, in September. Uh, the books that I'm going to be reviewing next month are as follows. The first one is actually a fanfic called Going Native. It's where Felix Gaida from Battlestar Galactica Reimagined was actually a Starfleet officer and he got marooned in the 12 colonies of Cobol. The 12 colonies of Cobol are actually in the Beta Quadrant. And, you know, he leads them to the Federation and all the fun that ensues from that. Not all fanfics are bad. Uh, I would never review a crappy fanfic like, say, My Immortal because everyone knows it's bad and why would you want to read a Harry Potter fanfic anyway? Uh, I'd rather review, you know, good fanfic, something you'd actually want to read. Not some kind of crap that you're just going to laugh at vicariously through me. Uh, I'm not going to really review any bad books because I only have a limited amount of time. And I want you to know about the good books that are out there that are worth reading that would take a lot of digging to find. Uh, the next book I'm going to review is Blaze of Glory. It's a rando TNG novel. Absolutely excellent. Uh, Captain Picard and company have to hunt down a pirate with a souped up Constitution class starship. But there's more going on than first appears. Really good novel. Uh, I say in the review that it would make a good TNG episode, but not a great one. And that's because it's a fairly simple plot. It's just your basic, you know... I, I actually don't want to spoil it, but it's a fairly basic TNG plot. It's nothing so big as like a Borg plot or anything like that. So when I say it wouldn't be great, that doesn't mean it's not good. It, it's kind of hard to explain in that regard. Uh, the next novel after that is Star Wars The Courtship of Princess Leia. That, of course, is a classic Star Wars EU novel. One that is much better than the title would suggest. Uh, I'm a big fan of that novel. There's a lot of cool action in it. There's some actual romance in it that's not horribly cringy. Uh, really top-tier novel all around. And at the time of its release in 1994, really shed some light on the pre-Thrawn uh, New Republic. Really good stuff. Uh, the last book I'm going to be reviewing is one that's very near and dear to my heart, but one I only discovered a few years ago. Monster Hunter International. Oh, dearie, dearie me. You got guns, 
and you got monsters. And really, really well, good, really, really good writing. Uh, it's written by Larry Coria. I've actually met him in real life. He was doing a uh, book signing at a local Half Price Books, and I got a book signed, uh, House of Assassins, which is part of a different series. Uh, it's the Son of the Black Sword series, but Monster Hunter is what made him, you know, a super awesome writer, and he can write really well. He writes really excellent characters. He uh, forgoes the Gary Stu fallacy that happens at so many writers, uh, but a really good book. I recommend it to just about anybody, even if you don't really like paranormal fiction, I recommend giving it a try. Uh, then the next month, I'm going to be reviewing, that's of course October, I'm going to be reviewing a couple of audiobooks, actually, because I've listened to some audiobooks now and again, not often though, because I prefer reading my books, not having them read to me. Uh, there's going to be a smattering of science fiction books, and yes, I'm going to finally review Alien 3, the audio drama. Really good stuff, by the way. It's too short, though. I, I can listen to that for ten hours, but alas, it's only two and a half uh, let's see. This month, well, September, I'm going to be building uh, the new computer. It's not going to be that Intel, you know, massive rig that I considered building for a little while. Basically, I talked to Ray Nick and uh, a couple other friends about that, and they suggested to use Ryzen. I did some research with Ryzen, and now I'm going to just have an incremental improvement of the computer I have now. I'm going to get a Ryzen 2200. I can't remember the exact specs. You'll... When I do my uh, computer tour video, you'll see the exact specs, but it's a fairly inexpensive Ryzen processor that is 64% better, or 62% better than the processor I have now, which means I'll be able to easily play Doom Eternal and hopefully emulate PS3 and Wii U games. I'm hoping it'll do that. The FX6000 uh, that I have now almost can emulate those things. I get like 20 frames per second, so I'm hoping something that's you know, over 50% better, should be able to run it, you know, 30, 40 frames per second. At least that's what I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. I'm also not going to change the GPU because the GPU I have, uh, which is the GTX 970, I can't find a graphics card better than that for a price I'm willing to pay. If I wanted to pay, say, 300 bucks for a graphics card, I would get something that is only, I think, 47% better. Not enough for my taste. I think that GTX 970 is actually better than I think it is, and I think it's only being bottlenecked by the fairly weak uh, CPU. Now, that CPU is actually pretty good for what it is, despite it being several years old. And, of course, I'd like to thank uh, PC Gamer by default for donating that CPU and motherboard. The motherboard I'm replacing the one I have now with is a Gigabyte board whose name I do not remember, but it's a pretty nice board all around, really. Uh, and I'm just going to get some crucial some crucial uh, RAM, DDR4 RAM. Going to get 16 gigs. That should be more than enough for now. And uh, that's about it. That's all I'm going to really upgrade. Uh, now, I do have a donated power supply. It's a uh, gold class power supply, 750 watt, which is substantially better than my 700 watt rose wheel. According to Rain, those things have a habit of catching fire. Glad it hasn't happened in the... Um, almost seven years that I've been using it. So we'll see if that EVGA gold power supply is any better. Uh, the only problem I have with it is it doesn't have enough SATA connectors. I could just buy one, but I'm just going to not use a DVD drive now. I mean, the sad part is, who uses a DVD in these, you know, uh, mass media times anyway? I mean, I don't really... I, have, I haven't used a CD or DVD in I think over a year the only time I used that was to run an old copy of Elite Force 2 where that was it uh, and I th actually no I did rip some music from some CDs I dug out of my collection but I can't imagine ever ripping any more CDs so yeah if I find I need it I'll install it but for right now I'm gonna go DVD driveless that's just the way it goes in 2019 I the mighty general am finally moving on from physical media now on the subject of the mighty general so uh there was a fanfic i created back in 2008 that was a self-insert fanfic of the highest order where basically i become some sort of galactic superhero well i was talking to a friend of mine and basically they suggested that i was actually the bad guy the entire time and that just like blew my mind man it's like wait the bad guy and well Looking at the story, yeah, he pretty much was the bad guy. And that really kind of put some things in a new light. 
you know, the idea of, like, everyone's the hero of their own story, like Darth Vader thinks he's the good guy, you know, and stuff like that, it's like, oh my god, no wonder it's so easy to fall to the dark side. Because you don't think you've fallen to the dark side. You think you're actually, you know, the hero going to save everybody. That is an interesting concept. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewrite that fanfic a little bit and then do a video on it. The fanfic is basically this. And I ended up getting a call. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, it's basically it's going to be an interesting story where you see this guy kind of like falls to the dark side but not know it. And I'm going to create another character that actually has to go fight him. Who is more or less a Han Solo-ish kind of character. Basically, it's a it's an interesting character study of myself. See, that's kind of a crazy concept in and of itself right there. You know, how well does one know oneself? You know, because everyone says, oh, I would never do this or that. But how easy is it to do this or that? So I'm going to basically explore that aspect of myself in fanfic form. Uh... I'm looking forward to working on that project. I'm actually going to be working on that with a friend of mine, actually. Uh, that's going to come around, I think, sometime eh, next year-ish. Just going to have to see. Uh, just time permitting. Uh, also, on the creative front, ladies and gentlemen, I've decided to make another game. Uh, for those who don't know, I actually did make an RPG Maker game based more or less on Dragon Warrior. Dragon Warrior 1 is one of my favorite games of all time, and Dragon Warrior 2 is also quite good as well. I specifically like the uh, SNES remakes, well, the F Super Famicom remakes, although they have been translated into English. You just have to know where to find them. Uh, but I've been a fan of Dragon Warrior. Now, the next one is going to basically be more or less like Dragon Warrior 2. There's actually going to be uh, partners you can recruit. And also, it's still going to be from the first-person perspective because I like that a little bit more than the side battle view. I, it's just something that I enjoy. Now, the setting for this new game is actually going to be a Weird West setting. There's not that many Weird West RPGs out there, and I think it might differentiate my game a little bit from the uh, mass of others. That is definitely something that's coming in 2020, because I don't have enough time to work on a game. But I did already purchase uh, RPG Maker MV, along with a Western Music Pack to work on it. Now, this is not going to be a commercial game, but it is going to be uh, just a a proof of concept, and then I might try to make a commercial Western-based RPG. Not sure when that's going to happen, but just something I've been thinking about. Uh, let's see. I want to wade in on the Ion Maiden controversy. Oh, dearie, dearie me, ladies and gentlemen. Ion Maiden. Actually, that's not what it's called anymore. Ion Fury. Let me put it this way. When I do the review, I'm going to have I'm going to mention the names. It's like, first it was Ion Maiden, then it's Ion Fury... And trying not to call it Ion Storm is not an easy prospect. Because whenever I talk about this with, with various friends, I'm like, oh yeah, Ion Storm. No, it's, it's, it's Ion Fury. There we go. Ion Maiden does sound better. You know, it's really sad that Iron Maiden decided to have some goddamn lawsuit. Although it probably wasn't the band. It was their legal team or something like that. It's like, you know you've sold out when you've got a legal team. Fucking sold out, man. But anyway, moving right along. Yeah, that controversy is one of those things. It was a it was a shampoo bottle, a shampoo bottle, basically sank a game. That's one of the best I've played all year. Uh, for those who don't know, I had made it and had a uh, shampoo bottle that said something that offended the SG Dubs, that no one would have cared about back in the late nineties, but no one. But it's not the late nineties, I guess. But I made it as a very good first-person shooter, an excellent first-person shooter, that it's kind of an interesting concept. This is something I'm going to bring up in a video in the future, time permitting. It always, there's a lot of videos I'd like to make, but, you know, full-time job, you know, I mean, there's just not that much time to do them all. But an interesting concept of nostalgia versus, well, this nostalgia, is a game good because of nostalgia or is it good because of itself? And the thing is, some would probably say that Ion Maiden is popular just because it's a nostalgia shooter, but it really isn't. Uh, I've shown people that were born way after the fact when it came to the build engine and Duke Nukem and all that, and they love it. They see it as a stylized game versus a retro game of some description. And that is an interesting thing right there. You know, you can show people born decades after the fact of some of these games. Some games that I didn't grow up with 
and they're good games in and of themselves. Graphics really don't mean as much as you might think they do. You know, it's like Dragon Warrior 2. There's a lot of young fans of that game, and they don't care that it was created back in, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. You know, that's just one of those things. Dragon Warrior is a great series. You know, Iron Maiden, it has graphics that are different from modern graphics, but not necessarily worse. And it really comes down to, when it comes to a lot of these games, gameplay. You know, the idea that Ion Maiden is a much more straightforward shooter than anything modern. I personally do not like modern shooters, in the slightest, really, because they don't let you actually do anything. Everything is railroaded, and you never get a chance to play the game. So, yeah. Ion Maiden, it's sad that the controversy has overshadowed the game, but I would recommend acquiring it. The reason I recommend acquiring it, now, here's what's funny, though. When I first played the game, the controversy just got started. Oh, they're censoring it, blah, blah, blah. So my original thing was, well, if they censor it, so what? You can get a mod that adds in all the censored stuff. Doesn't matter. Now they're saying they're not censoring it, so, yeah, what are they doing? I don't know. Mostly, I don't care. Get the game. It's fun. It is well worth your time. Now, let's see what else we have for the month of August, ladies and gentlemen. I do have some more book recommendations. For those of you who like to read, and I would hope it's all of you, there are two books I would recommend reading. One is The Crystal Shard, which is the first book of the Forgotten Realm, no, of the Dark Elf Saga. Excellent writing all around, uh, much more, um, much more compact than say something from George R. R. Martin, where George R. R. Martin can basically spend an entire book going from one end of the world to the other. Uh, in the first chapter alone of Crystal Shard, you've got this epic battle, you know, beginning to end. Sets up all the characters, does everything. One chapter. One. Whereas George R. R. Martin, whole book. Next one I recommend is Magician. Basically, in one book, which is a massive book, by the way, I think it's something like a thousand pages, in one book, uh, Raymond E. Feist does more than George R. R. Martin did in the last 20 years. And the only reason I'm ragging on old J.R.R.M. is just because he's overly popular because he's overhyped. He's kind of like, you know, J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. You know, Harry Potter really isn't very good, and the only reason it's popular is because of hype. You know, Game of Thrones or The Song of Ice and Fire, I know it has its fans. It's got a lot of fans. I've read the first two books. I don't really care for it. Uh, I'm not going to say the books are bad, but I am going to say they're overhyped. And they're not as good as the hype makes them out to be. Oh, let's see. Anything else of interest, ladies and gentlemen? Ah, uh, yes. I'm also going to be looking at doing some more of the food stuff in the future. Once again, I just don't have time. If I had the time, I'd do it. But, you know, as it is, getting one, two, or now I'm going to try to do... I'm going to try to do two game reviews and four book reviews a month. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it, but I'm going to try. But trying to do that and something extra is not an easy prospect. Not an easy prospect at all. And doing the live streams, that also takes time. Because I've got a lot of other stuff i got to do. But... I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm simply using that as a reason why I'm not getting out as much content as I would like. But I'm still going to try to be consistent in getting everything out as quickly as possible. Now, speaking of live streams, this week I'm going to live stream Ion Maiden or Ion Fury again. Uh, for the last time, I'm not going to go through the entire game, but I'm going to go through you know a bunch of more levels and then be done with it. Now, one game I am going to go all the way through is, of course, Gunman Chronicles. Originally, I was going to do that last week, but then the whole Ion Fury controversy started up and I wanted to talk about the game. Uh, Gunman Chronicles is something that I have not played all the way through. In fact, I haven't played it at all. But, from everything I've studied about it, it should be quite good. Uh, it's a sci-fi first-person shooter on the um, Gold Source engine. I wanted to play it a number of years ago. However, since there, was, there wasn't a Steam version or a Steam compatible version released at that time, which meant I was trying to run a Gold Source Engine game on a modern computer, and I it worked a little bit, and then it probably crashed, which sucked. So I never actually got past like the first five seconds of the game. Uh, so I'm looking forward to being looking forward to playing it blind. I'm not a big fan of Gold Source all that much. I don't think it's nearly as amazing as everyone made it out to be at the time or today. 
Uh, you know, like I say, I'm not a big fan of Half-Life. Uh, but I'm willing to try that out and see what it looks like. Uh, also, one thing that I really do like about modern emulation is RetroArch. Now, back in the old days, back in the old core, you had to have your own emulators for every single system. And the best you could do most of the time was just use save states. And that was great. But now you've got fast forward. I'm sure there are emulators that, have, that had that available, but RetroArch is just so much more convenient. You hit spacebar and can fast forward. Right now, I am doing a playthrough of Fantasy Star 1. That, of course, is a turn-based RPG, and it's so much easier to hit spacebar, and you can fast forward through all those random battles and grinding. You can really cut down on the grinding. It's really quite good. Uh, for those of you who have not played Fantasy Star, I recommend finding a copy or anything else. For those who don't know what Fantasy Star is, it is a science fiction, or science fantasy, rather, RPG from the late 80s for the Sega Master System. Excellent graphics. Gameplay that's really fun, provided you can save all the time, because it is hard. It's not quite as good as Dragon Warrior, but uh, I, I quite like it, though. Uh, and for all the women who are complaining about there's no women in games, you play as a chick named Alice, as, he, as she tries to avenge her brother's death against... The villain whose name I don't remember. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, August has been a very, very busy month, and I imagine September will be just as busy. And I will leave you with these parting words. Always keep an open mind. Do not get stuck in your head, for there is a world of possibilities to consider. And you don't want to end up inadvertently creating your um, self insert fanfic character and having him be the villain the entire time. And so, I am General Lutz, wishing you good, um... Dead Eye Night 2. And good. That doesn't have a cover. There we go. Brute Force, or whatever, makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue bringing you this awesome content.